None of it's going to do any good for you. We're missing, uh, I, I said it here earlier, this is, my, this is my puzzlement. Where is the fierceness we used to have? Why do women never feel? Why are we so top heavy that when we talk to women, she says, well, I have a boyfriend, we flinch. Uh, I'm sorry. We flinch. Where is the strength of men? Where is it? I've been doing this for 10 years, and I'm never ceases to amaze me when I look around at the group of men, that the men who are coming here, and what do I see? Women say to me all the time, well, what kind of guys go to your seminar? That's a big question I get all the time. What kind of guys? I say, you know what? Look around the street. There's the kind of guys. Right here, the guys walking by right now. They're normal guys. They're, they're, they're interesting guys. They're sincere guys. And I see it. I, I'm completely convinced you do not need anything. In fact, you need to strip away all the layers of learning and trying to understand that you're trying to do. You need to strip it away. Simplicity. To go back to what we used to believe, the things we used to believe as children, as little boys, when, 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 uh, when, you, when we were, if, if you were all four years old right now, and I was the teacher, and I said, okay, little boys and girls, who here can sing? You're four years old, what would you do? Me, I'm the best singer in the world. Who can draw? Can you, who can draw? Get out your papers. Who can draw? Me, 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 me. I'm the best. Right? You used to believe it. But then one day you looked over at another kid's drawing, and you saw yours, and you looked at that, and you thought, maybe I'm not that great. Something shifted. And you've been looking at that drawing ever since. Maybe I'm not that great. Maybe I just don't have it, have what it takes. I don't have what it takes. Here's the thing, guys. Um, I think that men fundamentally want what, the same thing we wanted when we, were, when we were little boys. Same thing. It's all we want, the same thing. And that is this. We want to know we have what it takes. That's what we want. To enter into a room and we know that we can represent ourselves. That's all we want. Women think guys are you know, paying for seminars because they want to get laid. Wrong. Guys think that's why they're, why they're doing it too. They think, well, I want, to get, I want to learn how to get laid. No, it's not. You can take that money and go buy, you buy sex. Guys will pay $2,000 for, for a weekend seminar. They could buy a lot of sex with $2,000. Maybe not in Norway. It's expensive here, but... <laughs> <laughs> so that isn't what we want. It, like, and, and, I, and, and reporters will ask me this, too. Well, with guys just... I remember I was on a Texas radio show, a morning show, a man and a woman. It was like really popular. like had a million listeners or something all over the Southwest. And... Uh, so, and they were interviewing me, and the guy is going, so you're here in Texas, you're doing a seminar. I said, yeah, I'm doing a seminar. We're teaching men about you know, how to be authentic. We teach, we, I talk about beauty. And he goes, oh, come on, you're just really teaching guys how to get laid. I said, well, you, know, that's one, you, you can assume whatever you want, my friend, and, uh, but you know, this is what we're doing, is we're talking about, about how to be a dynamic, interesting man. And if you want to get laid, that's great. If you want to get a wife, that's great, too. It doesn't matter. We're talking about something fundamental. Our authentic self is our attractive self. And he's going, he kept going, ah, oh, come on. You're just really just teaching. Come on. You're just going to get the guys laid this weekend. And you know, I shut up. I'm on live radio. And I looked at him. And, the, and I'm looking at the girl. And I looked at him. And I had nothing more to say to him. Nothing. What am I going to say to you, to you, my friend? I just shut up. I didn't say anything. And she started to attack him. This is her, his, his uh, radio show partner. She's like, you know what? You need to take a seminar. Rah, rah, you, when's the last time you had a girlfriend? He's like, uh, like this. And, and she was going to town on him. And I remember as we were driving away from the radio station, after the, we were still listening to the radio, and she's still going at him. It's, guys, here's the th interesting thing to me. Men are always suspicious about the things I say, and women always say, that, that's it. Always. Always. And guys go, I don't think it's that easy. Okay, carry on. You're doing well. A guy in Germany stood up. I, I gave a talk, and I said, and he said, you know, he stood up and said, well, I don't think it's that simple. I think uh, it's not as simple as you're making it sound. And I said, how old are you? And he said, I'm 32. And I said, well, tell me about your last girlfriend. Well, I've never had a girlfriend. I said, carry on. Well, I didn't say that, but I was thinking it. You're doing well. You, you don't have to listen. You don't have to, you don't have to agree with me. You do not have to. Pickup artists are great at picking up phone numbers. They're good at getting phone numbers. But where does it go? I remember back years ago, before anybody was really becoming 
you know, uh, the, the big names in this in this seduction community are becoming famous. They said we need we need to to have a seminar by you about how to how to maintain it. We can go get phone numbers. We get phone numbers constantly. And we uh, we've we've been taught to measure our result. We call it result by uh, the you know what we receive from the woman. In other words, if I'm standing over here and I see a girl over there, two girls over there, and my buddies say, "Go talk to her. Come on." So I'm in my mind thinking I have to go and get a result, which means I have to get a phone number, or I have to get her to smile at me, or I have to get her in my bed, I have to get something. And so I go over there with a hidden agenda, which is to angle the conversation to her phone number. And so I go and I start talking to her. It doesn't matter what she's saying to me because I'm not listening because I'm really just trying to get her number. I'm really trying to find out a way to angle the conversation so I can get her phone number. And when we get the phone number, I got a result. You should ask some of the girls that you know in your life, because I know that there's that, uh, women have told me this a lot. Sometimes women will give out phone numbers to men because they don't want to be seen as a girl that rejects men. They don't really want them to call, but they don't want to be bad. We get this phone number and we say, "There's our result. Ah, that's it. I got something good." And what does it do? We have to fight to make this materialize into anything. We call her. She might remember us. She might not. We wait the proverbial three days before we call. We play the whole game, this whole game that we're taught in, in, in all of society. We, we get this phone number, and what do we do? She gives us the phone number on, on a piece of paper, and we say, or in our phone, and we go, okay, uh, okay well, I'll, I'll give you a call sometime. And we walk away being cool. We walk back to our buddies, and really, we're just like inside we're going, yes, I got a result. I got a phone number from this girl. I really like her, but yeah, yeah, I got it, guys. And we go home. That night, what do we do? We take the number out, we put, it on, we put it on our nightstand like this beside our bed. And what do we want to do as men? She was pretty and we liked her. We want to call her. We can't wait to call her. Well, we can't do that. We have to wait. The next morning, we wake up, there's a phone number. Yes, I remember the girl last night. Incredible. I have this phone number. What do we want to do? I want to call her because I like her. We can't do that. We have to wait. We wait the proverbial three days. Now it won't look so needy. And then, we, and then we, we're going to call her and, OK, what am I going to say? We rehearse what we're going to say if she answers the phone, and we rehearse something slightly different if she gets her machine. And then we try and put a smile on her voice, and we, we call, and we try and say this. We try and be upbeat uh, and try and call. And she looks at the number calling and says, who's this? Oh, I gave my number out last Saturday night. Must be that guy. And subconsciously, what's going on in her mind is this. He waited three days. He's playing the game. I know my role. And it starts out like that. 